Big changes are on their way for the armament system, but will they be enough? In this video, I'm gonna review the face-to-face -face with the developers where they have taken some time and actually absorbed the feedback we gave in a special player council and developer meeting. I actually got to participate in this and we did not hold back any punches sharing with the developers what we thought about the armament system. So stick around in this video for the updates that are on their way and it sounds like it's gonna be a minute, they're on their way in February. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and if you're subscribed to the channel, you know that I participated in a special developer player council meeting where I got to share feedback about the armament system, and players gave really blunt, really honest feedback. Now, in that meeting, the developers said they wanted to release new formations, they wanted to release a rarity of inscription in between legendary and common, and we gave a lot of feedback about the system that was like, hey, guys, there is just too much randomness. Now, I feel like recently this is kind of a trend in some of the Lilith games. Like, I also play Call of Dragons, and there was a bunch of randomness in their pet system. Now, the pet system is a lot like armaments, and I won't go into the details here, but they removed some of that randomness recently, and I am actually having some of the most fun I've had in Call of Dragons ever since the game came out. It's actually crazy how good randomness, which is like, I don't know, every now and then you get like a really amazing outcome um, versus bad randomness. You can't be strategic because of the randomness. Like what I'm trying to say is if you pick the right randomness here, this system can be fun. And I've just seen the developers fix this problem in Call of Dragons. I would like to see them do the same thing here in Rise of Kingdoms. So let's get into the update, all right? I have hope. Armament attributes are too random making it hard to find the armaments I need. This is true. In the previous roundtable, we received a lot of feedback from you regarding the formation system. These are the key takeaways. I'm like, honestly, the armament system feels like whoever is in charge of like, I don't know, monetization, like had too much control and game designers were like overruled. <laughs> like the plot was lost respectfully in like the fun factor, the strategy factor of, of the armament system. There's the randomness overruled strategy. Special inscriptions are too hard to get, which is true. It's very true. You either are rolling huge amounts of cash in armament bundles, or you have to be a part of a winning kingdom in a KVK and a part of the group that actually gets the Autark testimonies, which is making an astronomic gap in power level between the haves and the have-nots. Um, it also takes too long to get more inscriptions, and inscription shard chests often contain useless inscriptions for epic armaments, which is the biggest true of my life. Two things are happening here. First of all, the inscriptions should be the extent that you're managing a collection of them, and it feels cool to have them, and you deploy them to make your march do something specific, but, it, but now it's just, hey, let's see what random inscriptions I got. Let's see what random stats are on there, and let's just gamba a bit if I can to maybe make it a little bit better, right? So the point I'm trying to make here is that shifting that from a gamba fest to a strategy session is like a night and day difference in how players would actually think about the armament system. Like completely night and day. If armaments were actually about customization of your march based off of inscriptions that you've gotten. And 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 you know, look, we gave that feedback, and I, I hope as we go through this, that'll be received. The other thing is that, like, after a very quick point, epic armaments become almost entirely worthless. So the fact that you spend gobs of either time or money or both in order to get one of these inscription shard chests only to get total trash as the epic inscription is like a is, is just like a huge bummer, right? And, you know, for those that haven't seen this particular mechanic is, you know, you go in and you get tons of armaments and then you recycle tons of armaments, literally thousands of dollars worth, if you're spending, in order to get one of these inscription shard chests and then the inscription is, is garbage, right? So the point that I'm trying to make is not at all to bash the system, but to constructively point out that the opportunity here is that this could be a very fun and strategic system if they double down on this inscription thing. And the other thing I'll point out about these inscriptions, just really quickly, is the difference between sort of pets in Call of Dragons, which is the same system as this, but, um, well, it's achieving the same thing, but like pets, you actually have an upwards of eight different customizable things that your pet can do. And that is huge, 
right? Like this is a stat stick with a maximum of four customization choices if you're actually building one with an inscription. And I just feel like if they shifted the entire dynamic away from like, you know, did you gamba some good stuff to can you strategically create some good stuff, it is just a night and day difference in how players will experience this system, okay? Just my my two cents on that one, right? And I'm sharing this feedback because I like really want the game to be successful, and I just saw Call of Dragons actually fix this problem, and it's so fun. So my armaments with special inscriptions still have useless attributes even after 10 transmutations. Yeah, I mean, look, I have done this, and I can point to these armaments, and it's tragic. Even if it's not a special inscription, like... Bro, look at this. Uh, where is it? Right here. This armament, double inscription. But I have cavalry here, man. Oh, I got wrecked. And like, I have many of these armaments. I, I actually have many of these armaments. Um, oh yeah, here's a good example where I'm on my way to getting wrecked. So I, I just even stopped gambaing this one with the transmutation stones. It's only counter, 3% less counter attack and march speed. Like it's actually not worth the gamba. So I, I, I mean, I did a few and I guess I stopped. Um, I've got tons of these. I actually feel like I have tons of these. If I go over here, um, all I have to do is find one where I've max transmuted. And I'm, I'm sure I have several of those. Uh, this is a good one to work on, but you know, I, I'm working on infantry, not cavalry. Um, gosh. Oh, here's one. We got there. This one turned out okay. 1.8 attack, 3% defense, 0.6 all damage, but like could have been way better and I'm out of transmutations. And like, would I try to transmute more? Probably, um, potentially, I don't know. So, you know, the, there's a bunch of these armaments where like you run out of tries and it's just kind of GG. Uh, so let's go actually review the mail and what are they doing about all this? As such, we have decided to optimize the process of acquiring and upgrading armaments. The current plan is as follows. Add a guarantee mechanic. The armaments and inscriptions you acquire will be recorded, and you will be guaranteed a rare or special inscription if you haven't got one in a while. This is a great choice. The thing I've always been frustrated about with randomness is that, like, there's always big winners, which means there's always big losers. And it this is just, like, the way that statistics and distributions work. Like when you have randomness, you can expect, you know, some number of people to perform on average and some number of people perform better or worse than average. And so a pity system is really common in these styles of games. I mean, just to name a few games that I've played where that is a thing, um, you've got Genshin Impact, which is like one of the most money earning games of all time, which has a pity system for summons. Um, you've got I don't know. We could look at Hearthstone. After opening a certain number of packs, you're always guaranteed a legendary. Zenless Zone Zero. Um, I played the closed beta for that recently, and like there's a pity system built into that, made by the makers of Genshin Impact. So you'd expect them to do the basic, a little, almost the exact same summoning system because they know it works so well. So the point I'm trying to make is like a pity system here just makes a ton of sense. A ton of sense. Even the Wheel of Fortune in Call of Dragons has a pity system, or at least it used to. I don't know if it still does, which is kind of weird. I'll have to look at that. Um, but anyways, optimize the travel and dispatch systems. You'll be able to select certain formations and earn armaments for those formations after completing a dispatch or travel. Amazing. Make these less about Gamba and more about strategic choices. Yes, you can have randomness every time you travel. But should that randomness be fully 100% random or should you be able to be strategic? And like, it's a strategy game. I would like for some strategy options. So it's cool that we're able to do that. Remember, this is sort of an equivalent of the pet system in Call of Dragons. In that game, you catch pets which have skills. You release the pet to obtain some of those skills if you don't want the pet and most you don't want. But you build a collection of skills and then you deploy them, right? And there's a lot of randomness there, but none of that is bad randomness. Um, so making these strategic choices removes some of the bad randomness where you get like a perfectly statted armament, but for the wrong formation or the wrong stat type, maybe the at least, maybe that's something, I don't know. Maybe stat type they won't address, but wrong formation is really annoying. So in both systems, we will increase the chance of obtaining armaments and reduce the chance of obtaining resources and speed ups. Yeah, like I'm not traveling for resources and speed ups. I get that like, there's some randomness there, but like this is an example of bad, like bad randomness. Like, why am I getting resources and speed ups when I'm pulling for armaments? 
Provide more sources for armaments. I think that's fine. Um, yes, we would like to see that. Replace inscriptions for epic armaments in the inscription shard chests with items that can enhance legendary armaments. Now, this is kind of weird, and I think it's very specific in its wording. Items that can enhance legendary armaments. I think, and we'll see about this in a minute, but I think they're going to add something that maybe refreshes your ability to transmute 10 times again or something. I'm just predicting here based on what we're going to see in a minute. Um, because I did get a quick glance at this before I, you know, did this reaction video, but um, the epic armaments and the inscription shard chests are crazy. And, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. Optimize transmutation. After 10 transmutations, you'll be able to continue transmuting your armaments by other means. See what I mean? I think they're going to have something that resets the transmutation attempts or something. I don't know. We're currently working on the details of the above adjustments, which will be released over the next two to three updates. This is far away. We've also decided to postpone the introduction of new formations and rare inscriptions till the end of February. I think this is a great choice. It feels really premature to do this sort of victory dance of adding new formations and rare inscriptions when, like, the core of the system still doesn't deliver the kind of strategic fun that players are looking for. In addition, we've received feedback that trying to awaken equipment from the Season of Conquest combat shop is too difficult due to the limited number of blueprints you can acquire per season. This is absolutely true. I mean, people are actually looking at the uh, accessories you can get other ways. And in the short term, like, that's going to be the way to go. I mean, in a year, well, it, yes, it would literally take a whole year to actually max one accessory uh, for, you know, yeah, one accessory. Because each time you go into a pop, you get one of them. And like if you do a KVK once every, you know, three months, once a quarter, you get four per year. So even if you had the materials, like it takes you a year, which means if you rally your garrison multiple troop types, you can forget about that for at least... Uh, I mean, two years to get to the second troop type, three years to get to the next troop type. So in response, we're currently considering increasing the number of blueprints you can acquire per season. For example, increasing the number of conquest coins you can get, which is huge, and increasing the exchange limit for each blueprint. I think they should do both of these things. They should give you more conquest coins even if you lose. And the reason I think they should do that is that KVKs shouldn't be so emphasizing like winning that people just take easy KVKs. I think the emphasis on getting the win should be diminished and the which would by the way have the benefit of emphasizing taking good fights rather than wins so taking good fights should always be the goal i think make conquest coins available in ways that you can get even if you lose and by the way that also includes in my opinion access to some of those legendary patterns uh, really inscriptions but whatever increasing the exchange limit for each blueprint so this to me seems like a great idea I think it should be maybe three of each blueprint in a KVK, which like, yeah, I mean, most KVKs, you're not going to redeem three, right? But the ability to do that would definitely be nice, and it would kind of accelerate your ability to get what you need. Now, from a pure free-to-play standpoint, I think actually, uh, like, actually the best thing for free-to-play is to not increase the limit for blueprints, because it basically means that rally and garrison captains are just going to accelerate into the... Um, iconic equipment system faster than everybody else. So we'll see what they end up doing here. Uh, more blueprints would, from a spender's perspective, be a great thing. From a free-to-play player's perspective, probably not so much because, like, you're just going to get passed faster, right? But increasing the number of conquest coins earned is a win for everyone, especially, in my opinion, they should do that for people that are losing. So all in all, I'm really glad to see the developers like genuinely taking some of that feedback and running with it. I would say the biggest learning from the recent changes to the pet system in Call of Dragons is that what they really should, here's what I would do to inscriptions, okay? I would make armaments much less about the stat gamba, which is what it is today. Like we have to be honest, to call a spade a spade. Like you open a chest, you get random stats. It just, that that is what it is. Um, and you get random inscriptions. And I would shift this system completely on its head. I would make it so that you could inscribe at least two inscriptions onto an armament, okay? And I would make it so that it these are more about collecting the inscriptions 
um, than it is just full gamba and you hope for the best. Like you should have complete control. Now, for those that don't know, if I go to inscribe this two inscription armament, it will replace the two with one inscription only. So as it stands today, the gamba is literally the best way to get the best possible armaments. You actually cannot make the best possible armaments. It's it's actually not possible. You have to gamba for them and then transmute them to hope you land on some good stats. But I think the developers should flip that entirely on its head where, yes, it's still valuable, very valuable to like, get a triple statted armament. Very, very valuable. But then you take that and you put inscriptions on it. And the inscriptions should be extremely strategic. Extremely strategic. So this system would become fun, in my opinion, if it became about managing the collection of the inscriptions you have and, um, you know, making sets that do specific things to tailor to your marches. I think then the developers shift from the you know, Gamba that players don't like to a system that's actually super strategic. And like, yes, there's still randomness in what you get for your stats on an armament, but I feel like the armaments should become the sort of blank canvas for what the inscription customization strategy aspect of the game would be all about. And there should be enough options that that's really compelling. And there should be enough options that you can do some really cool stuff. I mean, look, I'm going to show you Call of Dragons for two seconds, and then you're going to understand why I'm making this recommendation. So this is the war pet system in Call of Dragons. You basically pick a war pet to go with your two commanders that go out in battle. So this is the equivalent of armaments. Okay, this is straight up the armament equivalent in Call of Dragons, but it is a hundred thousand times better than armaments, and let me explain why. And I'll be very brief about this. Um, the way that a pet enhances what your march does is fully and completely customizable by you, which is really cool. So there are skills that you put on your pets, and you control which skills go on your pets, and that is what makes this system fun. So, for example, I have an infantry march that's very tanky, and I want it to do damage to enemies that hit me. So I went in, and I made it so I do extra counterattacks, and I do extra damage when I'm dealing counterattacks, and I've enhanced that ability even further. So I've customized the way this march works, which is really cool. Um, I have, you know, pets that do, uh, let's, let's pick a magic pet, right? I've enhanced, you know, the magic attack I get, I ignore some of the enemy's defense. I do extra magic attacks. I mean, this is an oversimplification, but like when you go and play this system, you collect the skills, you collect pets, and you put the combination of skills onto the pet to customize what your march does. And this is so fun right now. Now, the way this used to work is when you put a skill onto a pet, it was completely random which skill slot it would go into. It was fully 100% random, and that was not fun. I, I didn't care about my pets very much. I didn't put much attention to it. I did what I could do, but it ultimately, at the end of the day, you were victim to the gamba, and like you either got lucky or you didn't, but I definitely wasn't going to spend a lot of money like gambaing on pets. Like I wouldn't go to a roulette table and put 60 bucks on a bet. I'm not going to bet $60 on a pet skill to you know have it randomly replace one of my other very valuable skills, right? And now this system is actually insanely fun. Like I spend no kidding hours like looking at this, customizing this, optimizing this and having fun with this. And it might sound weird, but like it's it's there. And there's still randomness in this system. Every time you catch a pet, there's randomness as to like is it going to have a skill or not? When you release the pet cuz most of the time you're not going to keep it, um do you get one of these skills that was on it? There's randomness there, but that's all fine. Like none of that is bad randomness. Even the attributes on the pet and the number of skill slots on the pet is random. But unlike in Rise of Kingdoms where you can do 10 transmutations on your armament, which is the canvas for the inscriptions, right? Um, in this game, you can do an infinite number of regenerations. So like, look, I can... I can do a regeneration. What am I going to do one on? Like, I don't need to do this, but I'll do it for the video, right? Uh, oh, cancel. Jesus, that'd be awful. Uh, almost did something terrible there. Almost, almost released a good pet. So the skills that you get on a pet in this game are modified by the attributes on your pet. 
This is the equivalent of the sort of stats on the armament, kind of. Um, except, you know, stats on the armament directly affect your combat results. Here, the attributes only affect your combat results to the extent to which they affect the skills here. So, like, this skill is influenced by spirit. So the higher my spirit is on my pet, the better this is going to be. But I can regenerate using a regeneration potion, and these are cheap, a lot of times if I want, um, until I get a really good pet. Now, if I thought this was better or worse, like, I could upgrade to it. Um, now, there's still a lot of randomness here, and, and you know, uh, sure, I'd rather there be less randomness overall in the system, but, like, it's fine. Like, this randomness is actually fine, in my opinion. Um, most of these regenerations are going to be no good at all. And I'll take it to 20. You can see they have a pity system here. <laughs> they, have a, they have a pity system in this game. I'm guaranteed an epic or legendary within 20 regenerations. And I can do this an unlimited number of times for a pet. So, you know, if I have a pet that's got some skills I really like, like I can just keep regenerating until I get lucky. I'm like, yeah, this has actually worse. I'm not going to accept that change. Um, so the point I'm trying to make here is that like I think this armament system in Rise of Kingdoms could be fun. To do that, they should make it more about the inscriptions and less about the randomness on the stats. And um, to do that, they need to make it so that multiple inscriptions can be involved. Like up to eight inscriptions per march is what it ought to be, uh, which is what it is today, but like you, you can't actually control all eight. You should be able to. Now, now we're cooking with gas, in my opinion, if they do that. And I, I don't know that they will, but like... You know, my two cents, all right? I'm very hopeful for the armament system because I, like, dude, I know I keep saying this, but I am actually having the most fun I've had and caught in a very long time figuring out pets. It's just been really fun. So hopefully we see the same thing in Rise of Kingdoms. That's what every system added to the game ought to create is a feeling of excitement around uncovering the strategy and then optimizing your collection. At the end of the day, it's easy to forget this is a collection game. Call of Dragons is, Rise of Kingdoms is. It's number one community, number two collection, number three war. If you get that prioritization wrong, the game's going to struggle. And if you want to see my thoughts on that, card in the end screen in just a second.